the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update Hola a very warm welcome to the VR show the show which talks about all the various major football leagues detail today we are going to go into the theme of interviews and we have the manager of Ceres Negros in Philippines Mr Risto Vidakovic with us today so without wasting much time I'd like to first thank Risto for coming on the show thank you so much and welcome to the show and I'd like to begin by asking you how are you and what are you doing during this pandemic period well i thank you for for invite me to the to your program and uh, i'm now actually now i'm in madrid i'm in spain because the uh the, we we still don't know when the league is going to start in the philippines and we are still waiting for the decision of from the government and uh, right now i'm in spain enjoying my family particularly i'm in the vacations and uh, but uh, still don't know when everything is going to start so nobody knows what is going to happen with the uh, with the league and with the afc cup and all the competitions that we have so you know you have managed in quite a lot of leagues in various countries you have managed in spain with betis b with honduras serbia assist you are the assistant in serbia yeah and philippines you are managing uh, ceres negros how is the footballing culture you know different in these places uh, it's um, football is um, similar everywhere uh, the only the conditions you know the weather conditions they changed and uh, you have to adjust of some cultural uh, uh, habits and uh, you have to accept the way how the people is uh, living in every country but football is uh, everywhere is the same uh, there is a methodology of work methodology of training and then you have games you preparation for the games and uh, pre-season everything is same everywhere so you know you are currently managing ceres negros in philippines which is very far from spain how did you go to philippines first of all yeah they it's actually is a very young club it's founded in 2012 and uh, it's almost uh, we start from the zero and um, some players they played in here in spain in in cadiz they went to philippines because they have a double nationality uh, half filipinos half spanish and then they started to play with the national team and then Ceres Negros when they founded the club they joined the uh, the club there and that's uh, there is one one player who who played when i were we that coach in Cadiz uh, that that player joined Ceres Negros and he called me to come there so i i i started from from zero practically because the club was recently founded and they they never played AFC, AFC cup and the international competitions and then we grow together so who is that player is that bnv no it's uh, carly de murga i know him too i spoke to him quite some time back yeah, he's now in in thailand yeah john buri yeah in john buri playing So you know like how is the quality of the league in Philippines uh, actually it's not high quality when we started it was uh, quite different because um, there were many many uh, clubs they they brought many foreigners and uh, uh, the league was a different uh, different way of play we played in the beginning we played home and away in uh, all around philippines in different islands but because of the budget it was very high very uh, expensive to to continue that way to play so they they changed and then we moved to to play the league only in manila so now the the quality 
gets down and everything gets down because there is no no crowd, no no people in the stadium. So just a small part of the uh, the clubs they continue they from Manila and then they have some some people watching them, but all others they are just. Uh, they are just guests in in Manila. So as as Ceres Negros also, we are just guests there. And if if somebody from our island wants to watch us, they have to take a plane to come to Manila and watch the game. So we are struggling with that. And now uh, the league is not so strong like before. Maybe we have only two clubs. They play in AFC Cup, Kaya and Ceres, and and the rest is the low budget clubs and. Uh, it's it's not very competitive. So, do you like that? that is that your favorite movie, Pulp Fiction? The back behind the poster. Ah, uh, actually, I like uh, uh, <laughs> many movies from from Quentin Tarantino because it's uh, for me. Is all the movies from him are very good, so I like all them. But I have only that poster. It's my. It's a room for my son. He is. He likes movies and he he is studying for movie director. So okay, so that's nice. All the best to him. Yeah. So as a coach, what is your footballing philosophy like? Ah, depends. You know, so, um, I like to to attack. I like offensive football, and uh, but sometimes you have to adjust. Not always uh, you can you can attack because you play. Especially when you play against strong teams, we played the, the Champions League qualifications this year, and we play against much stronger clubs than us. We play against Tokyo FC, we play against Port from Thailand, and of course you cannot open, you cannot attack openly, so you have to adjust some things to if you want to beat them, and especially in that, in that uh, special occasions when where you have only one game if you want to go through you have to you have to play different you have to prepare that the, the games much more tactically than than usually we play in the league in the league is uh, much more easier we are the strongest team and we are of course every time we are attacking but in the champions league we change the tactic we play more defensively and counter attacking and we have you have to adjust uh, depends on the opponent of course so you know like what is the biggest change that you had to make in your coaching style you know in philippines like when you were coaching in maybe in spain and in philippines what was the biggest change that you had to make uh, it's actually in the beginning it was uh, when we played in home and away the uh, the ground was practically Playable in all the all the all the places we played. So, but when we play in Manila, it's a different different uh, ground. It's a different. Uh, it's a superficial grass. So you cannot you cannot control the ball same like on the natural grass. So it's you have to adjust a little bit how you are going to play. You cannot take so much so many risks because if you play offensively you 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 it's all of course it's very important how you control the ball how you if you can give good pass and in the in the artificial grass is that that is not so easy because you cannot control the movement of the ball is uh, totally different so you have to adjust you have but we try to play of course our way every time we play there and we try to to play offensive football so you know like do you have any coach or coaches from whom you take inspiration uh, of course i had uh, in my career i had many coaches in in spanish first division i had uh, big coaches like luis aragones who i think it's the one of the biggest coaches ever in in spain and uh, somebody who uh, I think he built the World Cup champions because he won the European Cup first and then uh, unfortunately he left 
the national team and after that uh, there was another del bosque took the took the team but they they won later they won uh, the world cup and uh, the European Cup again, and uh, it was a very success, successive uh, team. And I think it's because of him he built that team and he prepared them for the for all the future they and for all the successive uh, successful uh, things that they they get after them. So you know, like, uh, which is your favorite football team in the world? Ah, uh, it's very every you know. It depends on time, and you know, in the nineties there were AC Milan. They played very good football. Then after that, they were many clubs. They changed the history. You know, uh, Milan, Real Madrid. Uh, Bayern Munich. Uh, it depends what era we are talking about, you know, because what time. Uh, in the early 2005, Barcelona played uh, for me the best football, and then later now it's Liverpool. They're playing very good football, so it's very hard to say who is the best team in the world. So you know, like uh, you have had a lot of experience coaching, and uh, if you had to give advice to a young coach, what would you give? What advice would you give him or her? Yeah, to be himself. You know, if if you have an idea, if you want to play a, a way, if you think your players can give you that what you want, and uh, you have to follow. I think it's the best way, and uh, be honest with the players. Be honest with yourself is uh, the only way you can you can be successful. So you know, like uh, I'll get to a lighter topics. How is the food in Philippines? Ah, uh, there is uh, uh, good question because uh, I am not I am vegetarian. I'm not eating. Uh, meat. So the food in Philippines is almost meat and pork and all the things, you know. And I'm trying to survive if I'm there. So <laughs> it's very hard to be a vegetarian there. So, but I, I cannot give you a, a real opinion because I I never tried the dishes with meat. So it's complicated for me to say how is the food there. So you know, like uh, I'll ask you one final question, Risto. Like, uh, if you had to choose between one of these two players, whom would you choose, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? Lionel Messi. Why? No question. Because I think for me, it's um, much, um, much. He has much more skills. He's more attractive. You know, it's more. Uh, he played more spectacular than. Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo is almost waiting, 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 waiting and scoring goals. It's, uh, of course, it's big player. There is no doubt about that. But for me, personally, I think Messi is must compete. Okay, I'll make it a little bit more harder for you. Oh, sorry. I'll make it more harder for you. Whom do you prefer, Xavi or Iniesta? Different position. It's not the same position for me. One of the best midfielders for for this kind of football, for offensive to play offensive football, to 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 have the ball possession is Xavi, of course. And uh, as a midfielder, for me, is the number one for for this kind of to play. If you want to play this kind of this style, you 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 need Xavi, of course. One one of of Xavi's. And uh, Iniesta is a different player. He's more winger, more one-on-one, -on -one, more goal scorer. So I think he's a brilliant player also. So if you had to, if you had the chance to sign either Xavi or Iniesta for Ceres Negros, who would you sign? I need more Xavi now because uh, we have good wingers. We have. Uh, 
fast players there, but we need we need one good organizer. We have one player who is similar to to Xavi, but if if I can choose, I will choose Xavi, of course. So on that note, Risto, thank you so much for talking to me, and I wish you all the best for your future with Ceres Negros, and I hope you can even win the AFC Cup next. That you have won the league, local league. Now you can win the AFC Cup, and I wish you. All the best in that and hope we can talk again soon. Take care, stay safe. Bye. Thank you very much. All the best for you also. And and, and thank you for inviting me.